Right, I'm on again, folks. Walking along the drove. The ancient marching route where King Arthur could have come. Um, battles took place out there, apparently. Saxon battles. One of the very last Saxon battles took place out here, apparently. Um, so you can just imagine, you let your imagination go, the, I don't know if they, I think they rode horses in those days as well, but all their gear, the noise, they would have had fires, they would have been hunting food, you know, you couldn't just go to Tesco's in those days and get a steak, you know what I mean? I don't know how long these trees have been here and planted like this though, but look at the view over there, through those trees. Absolutely fantastic. Of course, I didn't bring a little map with me today, so I've forgotten to tell you what the names of the hills are. I know some of them, and I know there's greater and lesser, or bigger and little. <laughs> Those humps there, they've got names, but I can't remember it. Um, I just can't remember it. But there are significance. There's this contacts are the ancient burial place, an ancient burial landscape. Um, the whole of it, really. The Mendips, to a certain extent, have got stuff as well. But, uh, yeah, it's just gorgeous. We just zoomed through past that big old tree that's had its day now. But it's witnessed many people walking here. Children laughing. People on their bikes, horses, ponies, cattle, foxes, badgers, everything, birds, everything that live here. And I'm glad my sister Jude's walking with me now, because I am, I am on my own. I do occasionally get little tiny feelings of loneliness. It does happen. Um, but not exactly what I call lonely. But I do a lot on my own. I don't think I've walked here with anybody um, for years now. Right, then on would we go. The second part of the drove. We've just come through a gate there, leaving the first part from Triscombe Stone. We're now heading to Crocombe Gate, uh, where I will check the time, and it's more than likely I'm still going to go down through Crocombe, because I wouldn't mind having a look around the church, walking through the village, and getting the bus. I still think that, even though I might have plenty of time, I still think, um, I probably want to do that. Just turning off quickly while I take a picture of this gorgeous scene. of this great cathedral of trees here. Back on straight away. Hold on a minute. Just sort of too good a shot to miss, really. Now, you haven't seen any ponies or anything yet. Yeah. I just, I just feel so lucky walking here. I mean, look at these lovely rooted trees forming a wall, a natural wall along here. And sometimes I've walked along the top in some areas, walked from tree to tree. Quite often there are cows in there. We might look over in a minute. I don't feel like it. I mean, in the past I just used to run up. Um, I don't so much now. But it's all gorgeous down there. Because it's very misty. We've got this um, North African cloud of dust of sandstone or some sand coming over, a plume I think they call it. And there's also lots of, I just point out a few events, there's lots of terrible wild flower, um, fires happening around the planet. You know, um, Canada's had a terrible time of it. Um, Australia, some of the Greek islands have had it, the roads was badly affected. And, 
yeah, they tend quite often they will have animals in this bit. I just still haven't even seen any uh, domesticated types. But look at these gorgeous roots, everyone. Yeah, I've walked along them before now, from tree to tree. Like lots of children do when they come here, the children are attracted to these roots. And big people, and they like to climb them. They, they feel they can do it. But of course, it does lead to erosion, eventually. There's a lovely agricultural landscape over there with fields and um, farms. All leading into the back of uh, the, the, the hills. Of course it's a Tuesday so you wouldn't expect to see quite as many people out. A lot of people don't even go out when it's really hot. Um, or they go to beaches. Now I live two minutes from the beach and to be basically, I can even see the beach if I put my head out of my bedroom window. I can see if the tide's coming in. That's how close I am. But I tend to go away out in places like this because it's great really that people are enjoying themselves having chips and ice creams and burgers and the seagulls are squawking because they're well fed and you know there's the fair and the the donkeys do you know what I mean and it's nice that people are all getting burnt whatever <laughs> but I and of course you get a lot of cars a lot of traffic as well so I like to come out here. I like this sort of place. Not here all the time, you know, I mean, country walks. I'm so pleased with myself that I chose this walk. If I had done the um, Crocom up across higher hair nap and all that, I would have been in Expose. But as I found when I was exposed a minute ago, it isn't that hot. Now, even if it is hot, there's that lovely wind. But God, look at this place, this huge drove. Just imagine marching armies. They would need it this wide, wouldn't they? And the farmers with their cattle. A big processional route this is. <clears throat> Tucked down there, there's an old farm, look. Right down there. Imagine living out here, though, and having all this on your doorstep. But people like that probably go to Western for the day, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's how it is, isn't it? But there's like two droves here. There's one here and there's one down there. It's almost like a it's almost like a motorway, isn't it? A motorway for livestock and men. Marching armies. These lovely trees. I love you all, you know. You still with me, Jude? Yes, she says. Yes, Sheila, we're going up to Crocom. Special place. Yeah, I know. <sighs> so here we are, folks. We're in taking the making the most of this gorgeous walk. And I can think of this one. I'm in my room, in my little cabin, I call it now. I was calling it a box, but decided to call it a cabin. It sounds better. And then, of course, I can say I've got cabin fever, and it would be real. So, it is a quiet retreat for me. My little den. Most of the I time. I do family tree work there, and I study history, and all sorts of things. I, I just love learning, and always have done. And I've always liked this sort of place, even as a small child. Something bonded me very early in my life to the Quantock Hills. And, uh, and they used to scare me as well, the Quantocks, actually. When I first used to come out, I used to think the trees were moving. I was a bit nervous, but then I thought, no, they're not. They're your friends. They love to see you. These only got to see me late in life. Because I never come out here until I was like 60 odd. I hadn't been out here, not this far, ever. But the Holford lot sent them a message saying Sheila's coming. 
We've known her since she could walk. Since she could first walk. We're just going to go up one more slope before we go. We have to negotiate a puddle there. I think we just go up here. We're just going to run up. But not all the way. Yeah, I've walked all over here, folks. And I know Jude's with me, and she will stay with me till I leave. Yeah. But wherever they've put her, it's our special place, and she's telling me this is a special place. I can see somebody right up there. I don't know if they're coming this way or... Right, I'm just going to take some photos. Might do another video. I'm doing quite a lot of video because the camera's not being naughty. It's allowing me to do quite a bit of video actually. Because I won't be coming up here again now for a year at least. And I'll probably want to do the Greenway next time. But I will want to, I do want to come up one more time. Because I need to do Holford before the winter. So I do need to do that. I'd like to do some of the combs, but it's too dodgy with the ticks to do go in combs full of ferns and stuff, so um, it's just better that I keep to the wide spaces. They're even about in the winter sometimes, you know. Do you know, I just feel so healthy when I'm out. I just feel, not that I feel totally unhealthy, but I, I don't feel toxic or influenced by other people's pollutants. Because when you share a building, you might have your own flats, but people spray. They're so overindulgent in using chemicals in the home. Anything from bleach, disinfectant, toilet cleaner, sink cleaner, oven cleaner, window cleaner sprays, this, that and the other, that just pump stuff out. I don't agree with it, I never have done. I'm glad this has taken me quite a while to walk. I'm enjoying every bloody minute of it. And I, I think I'm, I've made the right choice now to go down the coombe because I feel like I've had quite a big walk. I'll check the time again when we get to the gate. That's where I'm going to have my cheese and tomato. That's where I'm going to have my cheese and tomato. Just a little wander around up that area then I'm going down hill. Because I think I've had a good walk. It'd be no different to me walking round Sand Bay and then making my way back but a bit more strenuous than that. I mean, I'm quite capable of walking all the way to Bicknoller. You know, I'm quite capable of doing it, but I don't know if I want to. I mean, I'm getting, I'm enjoying this. I'm, I've been protected by the trees and I've been able to just stroll with no rush, knowing there's buses every half an hour at the moment as well. That's a really good thing. There are buses every half an hour. That could change in the winter, you see. But I still got to get home and you still can't trust trains. So, and I would have enjoyed this and not overdone it. But I am capable of doing it and I know that but I think I've done enough, it's sufficient, and I can come out again on another day. 
because everything's so gorgeous and beautiful and peaceful and I love it. I really do. Just love it out here. I'm really enjoying this avenue of trees. Total peace. But I can hear the army is marching. I can, I can take myself back. Because we come from those sort of people, I do. The Anglo-Saxons, the Danes, the Normans, Alfred the Great, he's in my tree. They all married into each other, see, people think it's far-fetched and all, it's not, it is not. The Anglo-Saxons and the Normans and the Danes and the Norwegians and all that, the Vikings, they all married into each other for peace and power reasons. And it shows in my DNA. I've had my DNA done. Anyway, I'm just going to turn off now and take a picture of that gorgeous tree there. I don't know how long I've been on Zoom, but that could be an awful video I've just done. Over and out. That could be a terrible video. I've been roaming around with it on Zoom, everyone. But you can listen to the narration. Over and out.